Welcome to Adapt and Quest, Maternity Nursing and Quest Review Practice Questions and Answers Using Test Taking Strategy for Nursing School and Anklets. In this video, you really want to watch it to the end because I have concept after concept after concept that you need to know to answer questions on maternity. Let's get to it. First question, first concept. What do you need to know? Lokia information. This is a high yield fact you got to know. One question, I'm going to give you all the key facts. Which entry requires further teaching? A charge nurse is reviewing documentation from a novice nurse caring for four postpartum clients. Which entry requires further teaching? That means the novice nurse did something wrong. A documentation is inappropriate. Number one, Lokia Rural. What is this? She, what did she put down? Large clot noted on day one postpartum. Lokia serosa, pink brown in color on day four postpartum. Lokia arbor, creamy white discharge on day ten of postpartum. Lokia rubber, bright red and clot on day six postpartum. What do you think? The content here is. What color of Lokia do you get based on the post-op? And so this no business documented something about four patients that need further teaching. Do you get rubra, red, on day one with some clot, cirrhosa, turning into pink brown day four? Do you get ava, which is white, close to day 10, or rubra, bright red and some cloud on day six. What is the content? Day one to three, rubra, you're supposed to see black clouds, red. Serosa start close to four to 10, or sometimes nine, nine days or 10 days. But what is the problem? Pink and brown, after that, it's supposed to turn white. And from 10 days going to multiple weeks, then it goes away. It never goes back. Whenever it returns back to different color, it has already passed. That's hemorrhage. Number four, the rubra with the blood and clot on day six, that's abnormal. What is the problem? The nervousness documented something that should be basically taken care of in terms of bleeding. This is bleeding. You should not document this because these actions need to be taken as soon as possible. So just document it. These need further teaching that this patient was bleeding at that time. So what is the concept? This documentation shows the novices fail to recognize abnormal lochia. You may see something like this in the ankles and they're trying to treat you. It's just testing strategy, bringing the concept associated with what maternity nursing ankles review is what you find on that question, and then you use it to answer questions. So watch for these kind of questions where they're asking you something is wrong, but you don't see it, but it's right there. Number two, another concept, concept regarding vaccination. Which teaching is the nurse a priority? A client who recently received what MMR saying is discussing pregnancy planning. Buzzword, go for the buzzword. Always go for your buzzwords and focus on it. So what am I going to focus on it? MRR vaccine, I'm planning for pregnancy. And then priority. What do you tell the patient? Teaching question. You should have wear pregnancy for what? One month after the vaccination. Two said, this vaccination will protect your baby against rubella in utero. You should also receive tetanus booster at this time. This vaccination can be safely given during any trimester. What do you think? You can see some of the answer choices are contradicting each other, they're sticking strategy, and some of them are stating fact, but the fact may not answer the question. Look at the way I'm looking at them. You can stop the video and answer it yourself. This vaccine will protect your baby against what? Rubella in utero. Of course, yes, it's good, but it doesn't answer the question. What do you teach the patient? You should also receive a tetanus booster at this time. It does not answer the question. You should, this vaccine can be safely given 
during any trimester is a wrong answer. This is a live vaccine. Pregnancy patient, pregnant patients, you stay away from it. Even though this is going to protect your baby, this is not the most important information at this time. The nurse is supposed to tell the patient. The most important, don't get pregnant. Okay? After one, after vaccination, this kind of vaccination, if you don't wait at all, at least 30 days. So the content here is to teach them the most important thing. And therefore, one to three months you're supposed to wait before you get pregnant. Otherwise, your baby is going to get into trouble. So that's the number one is the right answer. Which client is in active phase? If you don't know anything about labor and delivery, please stop. I have a bunch of video. I will link it to this. Supposed to know all the phases of the labor. There's not a lot of them. Most of them in, in stage one. And if you know them, that's where most of the actions will occur. They always like stage one and all the phases within the stage. Which client is in active phase? The way to answer this question is to know that stage one is divided into three. And if this is divided into three, then one, two, three, I have latent phase, active phase, and then transition phase. And you have 100%, you have to be at the transition phase. Therefore, this has to be 30. This has to be at least 60. And then this will be 70 to what? 100, right? Therefore, contraction or effacement it has to be like one to three. This to be close to like four to seven. You see what I'm doing? And I'm using that to see how I can arrange it as what? This is an active phase. To be in the active phase, two centimeter dilated is still in the latent phase, right? Five centimeter look like it's in the active phase. Nine, you're close to the transition phase. I told you, divide it, this into three. You can see from one to three, four to seven, eight to 10 will be the transition phase. Therefore, this is not. And this is what? Abnormal. It's not part of the phases of the uh, um, stage one. Therefore, normal three, it's the best answer choice that you can pick. You can also use the contraction. How far is the contraction? How far apart, right? And it's between three and four. And therefore, I'm picking number two. And so this is what is giving you. Active phase is four to seven centimeter dilated. Contraction has to be three to five minutes. And it's moderate to uh, contraction. Which fetal heart pattern is most concerning for fetal hemolysis due to what? RH incompatibility. This one, please know it in case you see it. It's a very important fact you're supposed to know so that in case they ask you which fetal heart rate pattern, when fetal has so much blood loss due to hemolysis associated with RH incompatibility, you will see it on the fetal monitoring. Is it bradycardia? Is it tachycardia? Is sinusoidal pattern and variable D cell? You can see, you can use the strategy. When you look at VHOP mine, there's only a few things that are involved, right? VHOP mine, right? You know, you have variable deceleration in it. This has nothing to do with what? Most of it is deceleration, no fetal hemolysis. Bradycardia is a deceleration, so it'll be one of these. Tachycardia can give you. If you have fetal hemolysis, you have anemia, severe anemia. But tachycardia can be infection. It can be anything else that can give you. So it's not specific. So the word most, you can see, is associated with sinusoidal pattern. Sinusoidal pattern, the fetal monitor look like that, smooth. Instead of going like, like this, a normal fetal heart, this one is very, very smooth like a musical tone, and that is worrisome, associated with what? Fetal hemolysis, and that is number three. So watch for that. Sinusoidal pattern is pathological associated with severe anemia, and this is, um, three is the right answer. A client at 33 weeks gestation is admitted with what? Preterm labor. Which intervention should the nurse expect? Select or apply? Three, five questions. What is your score? Number four, I want you to stop the video, answer this question, put your answers in the comment, and then I will take a look at it. I will comment on it. But if you reach this here, 
Number five question, stop the video, put down your answer and answer it and let me see. Because these are that thing place. We're doing this together. We're learning this together. Stop your video, put down your answer. But what do you think? Concept, preterm labor. What intervention should the nurse expect? Test taking strategy, preterm labor. Write it down, preterm labor. Which intervention should the nurse expect? Select or apply. Underline the buzzword, preterm labor. What is your job? Your job is to stop labor from progressing. So whatever answer choice you're going to pick, I need to prevent labor from progressing. Give them the colitis. Is he going to stop it? Give them opiate. Is he going to do that? Give them IV steroid. Is he going to do that? Monitoring fetal heart rate. Prepare for immediate induction. Prepare for amyotomy. And the administer prescribed antibiotic. Like I said, put down your answer. Let me know what is your score. But this is the content you're supposed to know. When you are, you are in preterm labor, we got to anticipate that you're going to have prolonged labor. Therefore, antibiotics are needed to prevent infection. I don't want you to deliver, so I'm not going to break your memory. So this is wrong. You should not prepare for induction unless there's severe. We don't want to do that. The kid is 33 weeks. It's not ready yet. We should monitor the fetal heart rate and contraction. Steroid is given as I am. This is wrong. Opiate is never part of the uh, preterm labor medications. If you give it to them, sometimes it can affect the kid because it's really cardiac yeah. and we will prescribe the colitic. So these are what is in uh, needed in preterm labor. And I want you to write it down. Antibiotic, the colitic, rest and steroid. Those are the key things you have to pay attention to. Which client order for IV opioids should the next question? I'm following based on that. Like I said, this is our concept. Concept, concept, concept. Patient, four patients, they've been prescribed opiate. They are in labor. Which one should you question? The client is three centimeters. It dilated with regular contraction. Six centimeters, dilated in active phase. He's in transition phase at nine centimeters dilated. In the latent phase, at two centimeter dilated. What is the content? Once again, what is the content? You only give opiate most of the time at the active phase. You should never give it at the transition phase. If you give them it during the transition phase, the baby will get it. And that because after transition phase, baby will be delivered right away and it can cause respiratory depression. Therefore, give it the most during active phase. You can give it a latent phase, but the most important is at the active phase. So which one? The next question, number three, we need to question it. Nine centimeters, you are in active phase. But like I say, if you need to know the phases of the labor, I will link the video, and, and I will link the video attached to this, check the description, and you'll be able to answer any question regarding labor and contraction. Before administering IV opioid for a pain relief to a client in active labor, the nurse should what? This is all based together. Like I said, these are little, little concepts. If you have it, you master maternity. You just break it down, whatever question they will give you. If you watch all these series, what is the problem? I said, what before giving opioid to a client, what should you check? Their memory is ruptured. What are the contraction? Is that a peak? whether the cervix is dilated, and then what? Effacement and 100%. You got to measure the what? Cervical dilation, you ensure effacement is 100%. You ensure the memory is ruptured. You ensure contraction at the peak. The nurse should make sure before they give the opiate, okay? I'm pretty sure you check everything. You measure the cervical dilation. You know the effect. First, the effacement of 100% is completely wrong. 100% means you're in transition phase, so you cannot use it. If memory is ruptured, of course, it doesn't change anything. What will change something is related to serve the cervical dilation. But the most important, if you have to give it, you got to make sure you're giving it at a peak of contraction so that the baby does not get it. So number two is the best. Painless 
uterine contraction that occur throughout pregnancy is known as what? Is it true labor, precipitous labor, Boston Higgs contraction, hypotonic contraction? I know this is a bonus answer, bonus question for you. And I know you got it because you get eight out of 10. It's right there, number three. And this is prioritizing care for maternity client, prioritization, patient prioritization, increase what? Priority regarding maternity patient. A client with diastolic murmur at 28 weeks of gestation. A postpartum client in the le uh, letting in phase. A client in latent labor requesting pain medication. A client 32 weeks reporting occasional mal contraction. Who do you want to see first? Who do you think we should see? Maternity patient, prioritization 101. Occasional contraction is fine, 32 weeks, breast and hips probably. Latent labor requesting pain medication. Yeah, you can give it to them, we have time. Postpartum client in letting in. What do you think is a letting in phase? We'll talk about it, there's a question there. But diastolic mama in the patient is 38 weeks, that's a problem. It indicates cardiac problem, it's not pre -enclimsia. Watch this, write this down. Diastolic murmur in a uh, pregnant patient is a cardiac problem. A systolic murmur is suspected, but a diastolic murmur is a weak problem. It's really indicate cardiac dysfunction. So you should watch for that. Don't forget this concept. Systolic murmur is fine, but diastolic murmur that you hear in a pregnant lady worry about cardiac dysfunction. I know you get nine out of nine. In the 10 one, put this on the cherry and get me 10 out of 10. Adapt and class, maternity and class review. Which nursing action is appropriate for a client in letting in phase of postpartum adjustment? This is a little bit hard, but you have to know there's three phases here. After, post, after delivery, we have letting in, letting out, and letting go. These phases are very important. You need to know what okay each stage, right? In letting in the first few one to three days, the mommy is all about themselves. They're selfish, but that is fine. They care about themselves. They talk about themselves. They talk about how they go through the labor. Everything is about them. Just help them. In letting out is then they try to learn about the baby. What is going on with the baby? They're ready to, you can teach them about the baby. And then letting go, they are in full control. So encourage socialization with other new mommies. That's not the first stage, which is usually the last stage. Teaching about contraception is also the last stage. It's irre irrelevant. Promoting independence with a newborn, that is what? Letting out. Physically, now they want to know about the baby. Encourage the client to rest and process birth experience. That is what? Letting in is about themselves. 10 questions, endless concept, maternity nursing, endless practice questions, expert answers. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Good luck in nursing school. If you like this video, just click on the like button, put a short comment so that we can grow this channel. Take care of yourself and all the best of luck. Bye.